Hello and welcome to this tutorial all about how to make a granny square block pincushion using English paper piecing. So you'll need your typical sewing kit, the things that you'll be used to using, some hand sewing needles of course, and either hexiform or paper shapes. I am using hexiform and we'll need some squares. We also need some half square triangles and I'll show you how to make them. I didn't buy them pre-cut. I also use some rectangles that I cut myself from a hexiform sheet, but you can cut them from paper. And you'll need to use the printable to cut this shape, either from hexiform or paper. You'll also need some stuffing and of course fabric. And I'm using some Liberty fabric that was kindly gifted to me from Ava and Neve, who have wonderful Liberty Society bundle subscriptions. And I'm choosing some prints that really contrast each other because that's how the design will show up really nicely. And I'm going to use some solid fabric too to really make the design pop. So when we baste our squares, we will need to baste one square in print one, four squares in print two, and eight squares in print three. And that's how this really lovely design will show. So basting squares and triangles is really easy. I'm just choosing the part of the fabric that I want to be on my square. I just add a little bit of glue to hold it in place. Now I use quite a small seam allowance on squares. It's about an eighth of an inch, roughly. And just run a dab of glue along one side, fold it over and then go to the opposite side. Baste that one and then baste the two remaining opposite sides. And that's it, really straightforward, brilliant for beginners. Now to make the half square triangles I mentioned before, I'm just cutting those exact same squares in half across the diagonal. I'm using a rotary cutter. You could do it with scissors, you could mark it first, but this method works really well to make your triangles. And when I base triangles, I do use a slightly larger seam allowance. I find that this helps when you're folding over the points. If you make it too small, then you can be left with not enough fabric, it's probably to do with the angles. So it is roughly somewhere between an eighth and a quarter of an inch. Again, just dab your glue on and fold them over. I do the shorter sides first, and then I fold the longer side over. And you will end up with some little dog ears, but don't worry about those. So basting these rectangles is exactly the same as the squares and do your other rectangles as well, the smaller ones. And then lay out your shapes so that you know where to begin sewing them. So this is the layout that you will need and of course I'll put this in the printable instructions. And then you're ready to sew. So you'll need your hand sewing needle, a milliner needle is what I use. And I'm using this Invisifil thread. Use whatever thread and needle that you like to sew with and we will just get started sewing the pieces together as you would normally for EPP. I've put a knot in the end and I'm going to start with this square and the two half square triangles on either side and I'll add that other rectangle that I pushed away, I'll add that later on. So I'm just going to start right in the corner lining those corners up really neatly and 
do a locking stitch in the corner so that it isn't going to come undone and then I just whip stitch together. So when you've done that row, it's on to the next one and just join all of them up just as you did before. So once all of your rows are done, then you can start to add the rectangles onto the edges in just the same way, just make sure they're lined up with that central square and whip stitch those together. So now your rows are all done, it is time to join the rows together, just as you would with normal quilting. Just make sure that you have the correct squares lined up so that get them in the right place and then put them right sides together and whip stitch all the way along. really make sure you line the seams up as you do this so that they all join really nicely. Just take your time about that because that will give it a really nice effect and it also it's one of the reasons why it's nice to stitch this together by hand. It can be more accurate than machine sewing. Well it certainly is for me anyway. So now the top is done, it is time to add the sides. Um, you just need to add one of the longer rectangles to that gap between the smaller rectangles that stick out because they're going to become the corners. So to do that, I whip stitch along that long straight edge first. Repeat for all of the other rectangles and then you're ready to start joining those to the smaller rectangles. So you need to just turn them right sides together, line up two of the rectangles on their edges like so and whip stitch all the way along from the top corner to the bottom corner. And when you open it out it will look like this and you just need to repeat it for all of them. So when that's done you just need to turn it right side out and have a look and it has a really nice shape now doesn't it? So now it's time to remove the papers from the top, the, that part, the granny square part, not from the sides just yet. If you're using paper but if you're using hexiform of course leave that in. Now I'm going to do some hand quilting now because I am using hexiform and I like to add some hand quilting to keep it in place. If you're removing papers and you're not adding a layer of wadding or anything to it then you won't need to do some hand quilting but if you're using hexiform I do recommend it. So I like to use a 12 weight thread there's an Aurifil thread I've got here and also the Wonderfill 
Fruity, which is the one I decided to use. I like this weight of thread because it isn't too thick and I just use an ordinary embroidery needle with a big eye. So I decided to just do some running stitches right across the central part of the cross, if you like, and just keep it nice and simple, small stitches, just catching that layer of hexiform as I go along. So you can see here that I did the running stitch going in one direction across the centre and then on the other rows I did it in the opposite direction. Just gave a really nice sort of cross hatching effect and I also did the hand quilting around the edges too. But you can hand quilt any way you like. So now it's time to baste your backing piece if you haven't done that already. So again just use a quarter inch seam allowance roughly to base this shape along all of the straight sides. And I'm just adding some hand quilting to the base as well, just to hold it all in place because I'm using hexiform. But of course, like I said before, if you're using paper, you might not need to do this. So now it's time to join the base to the top of the pin cushion. So turn the top inside out and line up the long side of the base with the long side of the rectangle and the shorter sides with the shorter rectangles and whip stitch in place but leave an opening don't go all the way around you need to leave an opening so that you can stuff it So if you've used papers, now is the time to remove the paper, but if you've used hexiform like I have, leave it in and now turn it all right side out. Take care when you do this because it can put some stress on the seams, so just do it gently and take your time. So now it's time to add the stuffing, and I just use regular toy stuffing, it's polyester, but you could use whatever you like. Sometimes people put walnut shells, crushed walnut shells in their pink cushions, and that really adds a nice weight to it. I must get some of them one day. But stuff it so it's quite full and it will, that will give it a really nice shape. So all that is left to do is to sew up this last seam and I'm doing some stitches in the corner to secure it and then I'm going to ladder stitch this opening shut but you could choose to whip stitch, it doesn't really matter but I like to do a ladder stitch because the stitches are quite invisible. And now 
now your pin cushion is done and it's such a nice pin cushion because it's quite big but i'm also going to make a small one from half inch squares so look out for that if you follow me on instagram but i'm really happy with this pin cushion and the inspiration behind it was the granny square quilt that i'm making so now it's really nice to have a matching pin cushion and all of the fabrics are from ava and neve thank you so much for watching i hope you make one have a look at the free patterns page on my website and there'll be written instructions and a printable template. Take care. Bye bye.